Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my E46 BMW and there's something wrong with the alternator. I was driving the other day, battery light came on and strangely this time it's, you know, usually when your alternator dies, the battery light will come on and stay on. This is intermittent. This is going away when it's idling and then when you're, or it's going away when you're at speed and it's coming back when you're idling. So um, yeah, the alternator is just beginning to go out basically. And this kind of points to the voltage regulator being bad. Now, I have already done a video on replacing the alternator. So I think in this video, we are going to repair this alternator by replacing the voltage regulator. This is a much more cost-effective repair that you can do on an alternator. Um, and I will go ahead, even though I've already covered the removal and reinstallation, I'm gonna do that again, just because you might not have seen that previous video. So we're gonna do it all in this video. So let's get started. The only special tools you're gonna need for this are this fan clutch wrench and pulley holder. That's if you have an automatic transmission. Um, I've long ago replaced the fan and fan clutch on this car with the electric fan from the manual transmission model. Um, that's a lot better because you don't have to use these, these tools. You can just, uh, there's one bolt over here and the thing just comes out. As far as getting this thing ready for the repair, we're gonna have to take off the air scoop and the air filter box. We're also gonna have to take that fan out. I've covered all of these things in my common repair steps video and I will link that below. So go check that out if you don't know how to do that and you can come right back here and pick up with the good stuff. So we need to disconnect the battery because we're gonna be working on the alternator. We're gonna be disconnecting the positive cable and we definitely do not wanna do that with the battery still plugged in. So we're gonna get this out. You're, you might have two clips right here, one here and one here. They're sort of, they might be quarter turns. They might be ones that you gotta pop out. So all you gotta do is just lift this out of here like that. And then it's a 10 millimeter fastener right here. Let's get that a little bit loose. And there we go. Pull that off, set it aside. All right, we need to remove the belt because we need to remove this pulley in order to get the alternator off. That's gonna be a 16 millimeter wrench or a 16 millimeter socket on a socket wrench. You just pull it aside like this and pull the belt off. Also get it out from under that pulley as well because when you let this go, the two pulleys touch together. So we don't really need to remove this pulley all the way. We just kind of need to get it loose and then we can put it off to the side over here. So you don't need to remove the AC pulley really. Let's get the cover off of this pulley like that. That's another 16 millimeter. Okay. Now there is gonna be another bolt and it is directly underneath the pulley right about here. And I think I might need a tad bit of extension on this guy. So again, it's right about here. You know what, you guys, you need a, you need a better view of this. Okay, we are looking down there. So it's not that bolt right there. That's for the power steering pump. It's actually hidden behind this pulley you're looking at. You tilt over here, there it is, right there. So it's just sort of underneath the pulley and that's, uh, that's what's holding it in. So we're just gonna sneak underneath right here, get on it, crack it. All right, so we need to disconnect the power cable from the back of the alternator right here. On this particular one, it's different than the one that my car originally came with. That one came with a plastic nut and that one was, I think around a, a 17, I think. This is just a regular 13 millimeter nut. So got my socket here. Okay, there we go. Little nut right there. And there's also a connector, which I'm just gonna reach back in here and take it off and then I'll show you how you get it off. Yeah, so that connector is just one of these. You push down on this, which is facing this way. So you push down on that and pull it out. And this is the old style connector, it's square. There is gonna be a round style connector, which is newer. You need to make sure that you know which one you have if you're gonna you know, replace your alternator rather than rebuild it. So that's one thing to note. All right, so now we just have a, an air scoop, which is just right down here. And I'm just gonna push down on it. 
kind of separate it because that's going to stay. All right, let's get this power steering reservoir out of the way. That just makes it easier to pry the alternator out. That is what we needed. Did we get it all the way out though? Probably not. Let's see here. Is it enough? It's almost enough. By the way, we gotta take this power cable out. This is, if you didn't disconnect your battery and this touched on a negative part of the engine, not good. So, there we go. So one thing I notice is we got some rust down here. And that's kind of interesting. Um, I am going to now hammer this bolt or this uh, sleeve out a little if I can. So I'm just doing that by uh, threading this in. Okay, I moved it. All you really need to do is move it a little bit. See now it's sort of flush right there. So now we're good. Cool. So that's prepped to go back in, but of course we need to take the thing apart and service it. All right, that looks like an eight right here. Two eights. Ooh, that's not so good. That inner bolt is moving along with that thread. That's not good. Why is that happening? Okay, it came out anyway, but that's no bueno. What's happening is, I think, yeah, this is supposed to be a, a nut on there that's just kind of sandwiched between the case and that, and it looks like it was just spinning in there, so it must not have been very tight down on that. Ah, that sucks. Well, we're just going to leave it like that. And there's our voltage regulator. Actually, really, really easy to change. You can see it's quite toasted. I mean, this thing, this thing looked, it looked quite new when I pulled it in the junkyard. Um, but it's now got four years of use on it. I have no idea how many miles that's, that's been. I expected a little more out of it. But, oh well. Uh, let's see, are these going to come loose? Yeah, they're going to be fine. How about this one? Yep. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, look at that. Nothing even connected to it, really. Just a push on those connectors there. How's the commutator look? Good. See some dull copper on this side and that side right there so it's not burned or anything i see a little bit of dirt here a little bit of dirt sort of right there right there so let me see what i can do about that let's at least try to clean it all right i got myself a piece of 600 grit sandpaper here i'm gonna form it in such a way that i can sand that thing while I'm moving it around, hopefully. I may find that I need to press in there with something. Yeah, that's cleaning it up nicely. Eh, looks good as new. Pretty much. Cool. Okay. Let's check out the new part here. It looks different than the one that I have, which sucks. What is different about it? Man, it's very different than the one that I have. Ooh, that's never good. Interesting stuff. Um, this does appear to be the correct voltage regulator for what this alternator should be. This alternator is different for some reason. Um, this voltage regulator does have a, a BMW part number, and I cannot find that on realoem.com. I can't find 
this part number on OEM Bimmer or on realoem.com. OEM Bimmer Parts doesn't have this particular voltage regulator. I did see one or two sellers on eBay selling it. Um, so I suppose I would have a way to do it if I wanted to, to do that. But I actually, I already have another alternator here. I'll explain why in just a second. But just to finish up this, why don't we, um, why don't we reinstall this bad voltage regulator just to kind of complete the repair. And then I'm just not going to put this thing on. <laughs> But yeah, so that's uh, that's weird. Uh, I don't, I do not remember what car I grabbed this particular alternator off of. Um, it was, it was an E46. And when I look up this part number, in some cases, like I see some uh, some 323s come up, um, maybe from 99 to 2000. But again, I cannot find the part number on realoem.com, which is very strange to me. I don't, um, I don't know what's up with that. Anyway, I mean, this is basically what you would do. You know, you install your new one. The brushes would be quite a bit longer, newer. I would, of course, suggest, um, you know, running the some some sandpaper along the commutator there just to kind of clean that up a little bit. And then this was over here, obviously. Right about there. Yeah, that's too bad. I don't know what was up with that. Okay, it's ready to go back on the car. <laughs> this would be the correct alternator. Part number I'm installing. So the reason I have this is because I ordered this first when I was going to do this video because I totally forgot that I had installed one of these in the past and I even began the video and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I filmed this thing before. And then I also remember that somebody commented on that video from years ago saying, why didn't you just replace the voltage regu regulator? I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I mean, I was doing that video because I had that alternator on my shelf and I was just needed to make that video as a video I never made. So um, I just installed that alternator, but this is a better idea to, um, it would have been a better idea to do the voltage regulator because that would have been something I hadn't done before, but um, whatever, I think we've seen how to do it. You notice this one is a little bit different. I think there's a sticker over this bolt right here, probably, which I'm not gonna take off. Um, so yeah, I mean, two bolts, you know, the plastic cover comes off and replace the voltage regulator just the same. I'm sure that this one is the actual correct voltage regulator, the same one he sent me. Anyway, we're gonna get this guy back on the car and you'll take note that this sleeve is already pushed in. We don't need to. Let's get this puppy back on the car. Installation is, as they say, reverse of removal. Drop this thing in. Get our power cable in. So my little duct down here, my little air duct, it looks like I've, I'm missing that piece that connects it um, down in the front. So it's just sort of loose. The, the little piece right here that kind of goes and connects it over to down here. I gotta get one of those. Must have gotten chewed up. Uh, maybe it was pressing on the belt or something. I don't know. All right, actually, to make this easier, why don't we do this? Why don't we stick this bolt in? Because this one's a little easier to, to see. That'll sort of help locate it. Yeah, there we go. So that'll help to locate it. There we go. Now we're good. Cool. All right, so this three-prong connector, that's for the mass airflow sensor. The one for the alternator should be hiding back here a little bit. Aha, right there. So let's plug that guy in where he goes. Yep. And now let's put the bolt on for the power cable. Very good, very good. All right, let's bolt this thing back in.
These don't need to be super tight. Let's tighten these bolts up. Now this one, this pulley, there's a little, um, there's a little locating notch on the pulley. So make sure that when, when you're putting this in, it's not, you know, it has to be aligned with the notch. Let me give you a shot of that. You need to make sure that that little notch, that little dowel thing is aligned with that notch. Because if you're out and you're sort of like that, that's not going to work. You got to be aligned with the, with the notch. Nice. Yeah, so what's happening there is that bottom one, it's sort of not, it's not threaded in the back yet. So what we should have done is actually made sure that before we tighten that top one, that tight one's going to prevent the alternator from moving around, which is what we need it to do in order to get it in. So you sort of have to be able to pivot this a little bit and then you got to give it the old reach around. Probably easier if we use this to give it some motion, give it some spin. So we'll spin it and then I'll move it around to kind of get it to catch. And the notch is in there. This long one's kind of nice for torquing things. Need a little bit of extension just to clear it. Yeah, the Milwaukee ratchet. Milwaukee extended length. Very nice. Sometimes you don't really need a flex head. Sometimes a flex head gets in the way. Cool. That ain't coming off. All right, now for our belt, which we had put aside. That goes around the outside like that, and it's going to slip under here and actually slips around, slips around like that. So put it like this. This one goes under here, and this one's going to go over there. So let's just get it staged. Yeah, looks staged pretty well. So we got to come up through the center of the belt right here. You'll see why. Let's keep that around like that. Okay, first do this and slip this belt underneath here. You want it above the alternator pulley like that. So, you know, just imagine you got your belt sort of like this. Now you got to slip this onto that pulley. So you see that's why I went in the center of it because that's where it goes. Pull this all the way to the side. You should have room. Oh, actually, look at that. We want to go over top of it. I forgot. There. Go all the way. So you got the maximum. Maximum. Like that. So double check. Make sure that your pulley is on or your belt is on all of your pulleys correctly. It's not kind of off just a little bit. So this one's good there. It's good over here. Yeah, that's the way we're supposed to be. Don't forget your little cover. All right, problem solved. Just got back from the test drive. Everything's good now. Um, sorry that this repair didn't go exactly how I planned didn't realize that that alternator would be a little different, but I think you still saw how to replace the voltage regulator if that is the route that you choose to go. I'm glad I had that alternator here ready to go on the car, so that way I didn't have to wait yet again more days. So it all turned out good in the end. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.